it's been almost a year. Uh, it seems as though it's, well, it seems as though it's been almost a year here, over 300 episodes. But today I want to finish the book of Exodus with you. We'll read chapter 40, verse 36, 37, and 38 and comment on it in conclusion. Here's what those verses say. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day when it was taken up. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel. So these are the last three verses in the book of Exodus and uh, talking about their journeys. And so now there is a portable tabernacle, a portable sanctuary. Wherever God's people go, God goes with them. Wherever they go, there's a sin issue that has to be resolved, and so God has given them the sanctuary system to uh, bring a resolution to that. And so sin is continually being removed from God's people because God wants to be with them. He can't be with them if they sin. Did something change between the time of Exodus in the desert and today? Is God suddenly, you know, uh, oh, sin is okay after all, don't worry about it. Is that where we've come to? No. The Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so God's hatred, a uh, visceral hatred of sin, is just the same today as it was when the Israelites, some 3,000-ish years ago, were going through the wilderness. Uh, their God has not changed. Sin has not changed. Sin is repugnant. Sin is, is anti to all the things that God wants to do. And so God has to remove it from his people. Uh, not a surprise. But today you'd think by just taking a piece here and a piece there, we're going to talk about forgiveness here, which is super important, but it's not the only thing. There's also blotting out. There's also cleansing. All these pieces of the gospel go together. And that's why uh, the book of Exodus really points over and over again from all the different angles it comes. It's pointing to Jesus. Jesus is the Lord Jesus uh, is the sin remover. Jesus is the one who forgives us and takes away our sin. Jesus is the one who empowers us and blots out our sin and, and give us the Holy Spirit so that we can have his presence with us. Just as his presence was with his people in the wilderness, even more so today, his Holy Spirit is present with his people today. So we have to have that. Jesus in, sin out, sin out, Jesus in. But if the thing is, there's no sin out without Jesus. Nothing is strong enough to get it out but Jesus. So a few more little uh, pieces here, little thoughts. Um, from Sarna's commentary and the one from Hamilton's commentary. Sarna wrote something like this, page 237. The book of Exodus, which opened with a tale of misery and oppression, closes on an auspicious note. Israel is assured that day and night the divine spirit covers over it, guiding and controlling its destiny. So God's spirit is with his people. And although the book began in this tragedies in chapter one, you know, and, and following, uh, God delivered his people. So it ends on a very positive note. Uh, other one here, this is from Hamilton, page 612. Exodus concludes by inviting the reader to think about where God wants to take us after we have experienced forgiveness and reconciliation. I thought that was the good note. I wanted to end this series on that note. Yes. God wants us to think where he wants to take us after forgiveness and reconciliation. After God's people left the promised land, he was bringing them into a land flowing with milk and honey. After we have left uh, our experience, our pre-conversion experience, we want to go with him wherever he wants to take us. We know we can trust him and he wants to take us there. Why wouldn't we just uh, agree and go right along where God is leading us onward, onward, onward. Friends, I hope you've enjoyed these, uh, however many of these there have been. Uh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna take a little break here for a little bit and uh, you'll, you'll get more information uh, in the new channel trailer I'll film right after this for August. I wanna thank you for joining me, uh, going, working away through the book of Exodus. By the way, there's some, several other things we've got here. There's the entire Gospel of Mark. If you poke around enough on the channel here, Larry the Guy from Michigan, you'll find uh, the entire book of Mark, the entire gospel of Luke again, and of course there's several other books scattered here and there we've gone through devotionally in this sort of fashion. So anyway, God be with you and uh, continue on your journey with him. Go where he wants you to go. Do what he wants you to do and you cannot fail. 
The God of heaven and earth wants us to walk closely with Jesus. He wants you to walk closely with Jesus. Thank you for joining me in this series where we've kind of gone in and spent a little bit of energy looking more closely at Shemot, the names. We call it usually Exodus. God wants good things for you. May you be blessed as you travel with him and as he removes sin from you and supplies uh, that vacuum with the graces of his Holy Spirit. God be with you. Thank you.